multi-billion dollar loans to themselves and to their, to their pals and to shareholders in the company and under collateral putting, he's a known guy, we know this guy. Uh, and so the serious fraud unit in, in the UK has called for more leaks. Uh, Eva, Eva Jolly, the uh, EU investigator, has called uh, for, more, for more leaks uh, of, the, of these types. Uh, and the, in this case, the, the bank got an injunction against, the bank tried to get an injunction against us. I mean, they tried to sue us, that wasn't successful. But then they got an injunction against the state TV, uh, the nightly news in Iceland, uh, the day after we released this document, who, who had a 20-minute special on this document. The injunction hit the news desk five minutes before the newsreaders were about to read out uh, all the information about that leak. Um, and they had no other story. So they just said, well, there's been this leak. We can't tell you anything about what's in it. Uh, here's the injunction, extraordinary for Iceland, that we've got that says that we can't tell you anything about it. Um, yeah, here's the website that it's on, front page. We'll just leave that there on air for 13 minutes. <laughs> uh, so, yes, we, we had a, a, on, our, on our chat server an enormous flood of people speaking Icelandic <laughs> all, all of a sudden from nowhere. Um, and the case went to court again two days later uh, and uh, was dropped under the basis that, well, it was out. <coughs> that the courts don't like to be seen impotent. So there's no point in keeping an injunction going if it's completely useless in practice. Um, and the Prime Minister of Iceland came out and said that they would change their banking secrecy legislation so if there was any sort of corrupt activity or inside loans or anything like this, uh, then they would permit uh, people to reveal this uh, to the parliament and to others. So a nice outcome just a few, just a few months ago. Um, and in the, in the same week, we had a similar situation in the Turks and Caicos Islands, another little Caribbean island, 30,000 people. Uh, Michael Douglas and his wife bought land there. Uh, it turns out that the land was actually stolen uh, from the Crown, sold to overseas property developers in response to bribing the Prime Minister, the Premier, for 500,000, um, allegedly bribing the Premier for $500,000. It's definitely known that he did get a secret payment from these people of $500,000. Um, he may claim that it was for some other purpose, of course. But m many other uh, many other claims of that sort in, re in relation to land trades. Uh, we released a redacted document a from a commission of inquiry and turned the redactions into highlights, something that, that we, we love doing, we've done in, in many cases, take especially badly formatted PDFs. So take out those black squares, turn them into nice red, look at this. Um, the a uh, High Court injunction was obtained in Turks and Caicos Islands saying that no media in the Turks and Caicos Islands could report it. However, it was already out there. When the second case came around two days later, that injunction was dropped. Uh, the end result was that the whole government was suspended. The British, it's a British overseas territory, so it was a British protectorate. The British took over the whole government and have taken over the whole government for the next two years to rebuild the whole thing from scratch, um, which is an interesting geopolitical issue in itself, actually. But it certainly shows you the seriousness of the uh, corruption issue and what you can do uh, if you release uh, the right information at the right time. Um, and a great little journal. Um, there, is a, there is a Malaysia today of the Turks and Caicos Islands. And that's called the Turks and Caicos Islands Journal. And it has been campaigning against this form of land corruption and uh, ecological um, destruction in the islands and for about, about a year. And it was involved in helping release uh, this report. Uh, so it started out with service in the Turks and Caicos Islands about one year ago. Very quickly, when it started writing about these corruption issues, it had to remove its service from Turks and Caicos Islands. So where did it go? Well, 
thought, well, we want something sort of away from the British, right? We know the British libel law is really bad. So we'll move the service to India. And one of the technical guys also had a uh, connection to India. The property developers who were being accused of corruption then hired lawyers in the UK who hired lawyers in India. And the ISP said, go somewhere else. It's too expensive for us to deal with. So they moved their servers to, guess where? To Malaysia. But after about another month, exactly the same thing happened. Lawyers were hired in Malaysia, legal threats came in, and the ISP said, you're too much of a problem to deal with, go somewhere else. So they went to Japan. Lawyers were hired in Japan. The ISP in Japan said, you're too much of a problem to deal with, go somewhere else. So they went to the United States. That was about uh, two months ago. Lawyers were, hired in, <laughs> lawyers were hired in the United States and a defamation suit was uh, launched in the court. No meat in this suit at all, just the, the $350 filing fee. As part of the filing, however, it tried to subpoena the Gmail records of the journalists working for the Turks and Caicos Islands Journal. And Gmail wrote to them saying, Google wrote to them saying, we've got a subpoena for your Gmail material. Um, there it is, the subpoena. In three weeks, we'll release all the stuff. And uh, it's up to you to fight it in California. So this little, small, uh, non-profit, corruption-busting journal is expected to fight a lawsuit in California against a millionaire property developer from Turkey about stuff that's happening in the Turks and Caicos Islands. Or Gmail will hand over all the material. Google, despite its billions, uh, has not tried to help them at all. Uh, we got our lawyers to step in, and there's some, actually some nice legislation in California uh, that uh, will permit you to knock this sort of subpoena out very quickly. So there's a bit of legislation that says you have a right to anonymous speech, and if there's a subpoena that tries to break anonymous speech in California, then it can be not, not only knocked out, but your lawyer's costs must be paid by the other side. Uh, so that hasn't gone to court yet, but we're pretty hopeful uh, that this little, little journal will succeed. But this, this case of, a, of this small little journal like Malaysia Today what does it show you? If you just try and say something useful about your society, you are hounded from one end of the planet to the other. So because of privatized censorship. So free speech doesn't just exist out there on the internet. It's something you actually have to fight for uh, by having uh, ISPs and, uh, and lawyers uh, sorry, ISPs who believe in free speech and are used to dealing with lawyers, and then your own lawyers uh, to deal with that, and then also some political defense uh, as well. Now, of course, there's things like Freenet. So there are, there are these systems where you can put information and uh, maybe uh, it, that's quite hard to get rid of. The problem is no one looks at it. Uh, it's, it's just too slow. You have to install other software. So it doesn't have any political impact. Uh, and that's the sort of sad reality for projects like Freenet. And it will probably always be true where there's anything that requires extra time. You get the anon anonymity from extra time, but people don't want to spend the extra time, so the information just flows slower than all the competing information in the world, uh, and so it doesn't have any political impact. Uh, we, ha we have these in encrypted back networks behind, behind the scenes, but we have fast caches out the front to just serve stuff up by HTTP, uh, or HTTPS, um, but we, but we have HTTP because that's fast. You've got to get stuff out fast. That's your best uh, defense against censorship is to keep it up for a while and get it out as quickly as possible and make attacking you a counterproductive effort. Okay. So I think, uh, yes, so why am I talking to you guys at all? Um, well. You know, you have a capture the flag contest here. Well, we have our own list of flags, and we want you to capture them. And so if you Google for WikiLeaks Most Wanted 2009, 
you'll see the, a list of documents for about 40 countries that uh, activists, journalists, human rights investigators, police, uh, anti-corruption people, uh, some historians and random internet users uh, have contributed. Uh, so if you uh, are in a position as a consultant or you know someone who's in a position uh, to get this material, um, get it, give it to us, no questions asked, and you will help change history. Thank you very much, Julia. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I think for, for this slot we will not have a, a Q&A, but if you have any questions, please feel free to, to approach Julian um, and meet him at the right.